2015-2016 Common Council to order. <clears throat> Would the clerk pre please read the quote for the day? Thank you, Mayor. Effective communication requires more than an exchange of information. When done right, communication fosters understanding, improves teamwork, and builds trust. Thank you very much. Uh, tonight we have a special guest here to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, Adam Schmeiser. Adam's a member of Boy Scout Troop 801. He obtained the rank of Eagle Scout this summer and was recognized for his achievement at his Court of Honor ceremony last month at Grace Episcopal Church. For his Eagle Project, Adam led 68 volunteers, and I was one of them, for a total of 502 hours building 18 40 by 5 foot raised garden beds located on the Wisconsin Public Service property in a collaborative effort with several area businesses to benefit Meals on Wheels. These garden beds can produce two tons of food each year to feed Sheboygan County elderly, disabled, and homebound neighbors. Uh, let's give Adam a big congrats for the successful Eagle Scout project. Adam, uh, please step up here and please stand and join Adam Schmeiser as he leads us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, Adam. <clears throat> Would the clerk please call the roll? There are 13 present. Um, Alderman Lassard, Herman, and um, Drawn are all excused. Next, we'll go on to approval of the minutes. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to approve the minutes. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's approved. Next, we'll move on to resignation. City Attorney. One resignation uh, from Alderperson Daryl Carlson, uh, indicating that effective January 1st, 2016, he will be resigning his seat as the third district alderman. Alderman Hammond. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would move to accept the resignation. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to mayor's appointments. City attorney. First set of appointments from the uh, mayor submitting the following appointments for your confirmation for the business improvement district. Uh, two business owners, David Gass and Scott Grinke, and three property owners, Whitney Viglietti, David Hanneman, and David Sanderson, all for terms that would expire 12-31-17. Uh, there would also be the following appointment uh, from the mayor uh, in accordance with Green Tier Legacy Community Goals, uh, appointing Chad Palaszczuk as Sustainability Coordinator for the City of Sheboygan. Mayor also uh, submitting the following appointment for your consideration, Kevin Anderson to the Mead <coughs> Library Board of Trustees to fill the unexpired term of Martha Warchie, whose term expired, expires April 30, 2016. Uh, pursuant to the requirements of Section 7-30 of the Wisconsin Statutes, the Mayor is herewith submitting for your approval a list of nominations for election inspectors for all elections in 2016 and 2017. Then we have, uh, uh, did you want to do those first since those are the... Uh, Ones that lie over? Sure. Uh, all these appointments will lie over till our next meeting. Please continue. And the following are for uh, confirmations of appointments, uh, submitting the following appointment for your consideration. David Cookup to be appointed to the Sustainable Sheboygan Task Force to fill the unexpired term of Rebecca Clark, whose term expires 425-16. Uh, Sammy Yang to be appointed to the Senior Activity Center Commission to fill the unexpired term of Mary Ryan, whose term expires 425-16. Thank you. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to confirm. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Would the clerk please call the roll?
13 ayes. Motion passes. Next is our program, a year in review, enhanced code enforcement program. Chad Pelichick and Bob Wallace will uh, present the program if they please come forward. <clears throat> Thank you. So what we wanted to do today was run through um, a year in review on the code, en fan code enhancement program. And you'll recall this is the late edition of the budget, I believe, last year. Uh, Alderman Lassard pushed this initiative, and we wanted to run through uh, our accomplishments, we feel, for the year. Uh, we hired Bob Wallace in about February of last year, I think. Um, some of you may remember him from the police department. Um, so we're just going to run through a few slides. I'm going to take the first couple, and then Bob is going to uh, talk about some of the cases that he's seen this year. So if you can go to the next slide. So this is just a quick rundown of our uh, organization, table of organization for the department. Um, it's made up of planning and development and building inspection. On the left side or your right side, you can see uh, the planning uh, employees, there's a planning and zoning manager, a community development planner, neighborhood development planner, and an intern. On the right side, uh, the permit clerk and assistant permit clerk, a full-time and a half-time position. And then on the bottom, uh, code enforcement officer has a half-time position, a housing and electrical inspector, full-time, plumbing and environmental inspector, full-time, building and housing inspectors. We have two of those, a north and south side inspector and then electrical and heating. So we're a department of about 12 people. Next slide. So in um, early this year, we uh, had this two-year temporary position approved for a code enforcement uh, position. And what we found in the first year that this really set us up to give us uh, more one-on-one -on -one consultation with property owners. And I think what that has done is um, allowed Bob to focus all of his time on working with them to get compliance and working through those processes. And also uh, what we've seen is it's kind of lowered the amount of calls that uh, yourselves or the mayor's office may receive out of the orders that were issued because we were able to get them, connect them to the resources and really focus his time on uh, getting compliance. These efforts will continue in 2016 um, as a two-year position, and we're hoping that uh, by the successes you'll see shortly that you'll consider this as we move forward, um, extending this position. And we continue to streamline processes in the building inspection department to make this kind of process more uh, uh, efficient. Next slide. So this is a map showing the six-year overview. I know it's very difficult to read, but everything that's colored is every parcel in the last uh, six years that have has been uh, probably had orders written on it. You can see from the map we've primarily focused our efforts on the internal center city area because that's our oldest housing stock, and that's where most of um, rental properties may be where there would be some issues. Um, but... Uh, this has been an effort that started out with the police department back in 2010 and is aggressively <coughs> growing year after year to where uh, now we've actually gone to some properties multiple times um, and continue to follow up on them. So overall, I think we've hit a good portion of the center city. It's primarily in the north area, northern uh, side of the city you can see, but there is some in the south. We used to do, prior to Bob's position, we used to do uh, a couple neighborhoods a, a year with our building inspectors, and the reason that we weren't as efficient with that is because they were also doing commercial inspections. Um, we're now, in the last year and a half to two years, the inspectors have spent, uh, the building inspectors have spent most of their time on new construction inspections thus we don't have time to do this. So this has really kind of given us more flexibility. If you can go to the next slide. So this is the 2015 um, parcels that have been um, done this year. And what you can see in this map is the red identifies letters or citations that have been issued. Uh, and then the blue are complaints and what what Bob will talk about shortly is that a lot of um, a lot of the cases that we saw this year and the issues we dealt with weren't necessarily called in by neighbors um, they were called they were really identified by driving the streets 
and getting in alleys and being able to see what was going on. And it's ironic that a lot of the um, the worst cases, I would say, is people have lived they live next to this and they kind of treat that as the norm and they don't they don't complain about it. And we used to get a lot of complaints, and for some reason we don't get as many complaints, but we're trying to address them by having a person on the street and really getting out there to understand what's going on. So if you can go to the next slide. On this slide, I'm not going to go through this in detail, but I would ask you to take a look at the last four, five columns. Um, these are year, these are year to date uh, with 14 and 15, and what you can see is that um, there's a total number of violations for 2014 was 1,051. Total number of violations for 2015 was 1,897. And not that we, we don't look at this as a revenue generator. Um, we look at this as, as keeping our neighborhood strong. And, you know, you look at the citations, and we've doubled year-over-year year citation issuance, and it's really the, the problem properties that fail to comply. Um, Bob has done a very good job working with people to get compliance, giving them extensions, hooking them up with uh, different programs to help. So it's not about the citations, but there are properties, and, and some of you have called us about those, that we're just forced to issue citations if they fail to work with us or don't even work, call us or anything. So um, the, you know, the citations, you can't, the citation is $691 per violation. You can't take that number and multiply it by the 435 because some of these, some of this work gets done completed in time for the court hearings and then the judge will lower the amount based on if the work was done. But I think it's, uh, this shows that we've been more aggressive in what we do. On the next page, next slide. The, this is nuisance complaints. So nuisance complaints in our world is primarily garbage issues and zoning issues, and that would be cars parked on grass and um, other types of things zoning related. Um, in the past, some of that stuff shifted over to the police department under the garbage part. This year, we've helped them out with dealing with garbage as well, so we've had a little duplicate of services, but we're always working together to make sure we're doing the best. Um, you can see that in... Uh, 2015, uh, the number of approximate number of inspections was about 1,196, um, and then the about 400, 500 of them complied with, and that's primarily garbage where we give them a couple days to get the garbage cleaned up and they get out there. Otherwise, there are times where we've issued citations related to not getting the garbage cleaned up. Next slide. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Bob to run through a few slides related to um, some of the pictures and stuff that we saw over the last year, and then there's one slide at the end that I just want to talk about as a recap for the department. So, Bob. Okay, so I've, I've learned a little bit about code enforcement in the last year or so. Um, obviously, I think most of you know me, I came from the police department, so I was familiar with the city, and I thought I knew intuitively where a lot of the really problematic locations were. So one of the things I've learned is that um, the effect of the mortgage crisis and how that kind of related to some of the building and code enforcement issues. Uh, the other thing that I was really surprised by is the number of properties, especially in the central part of the city, that are actually owned by um, uh, landlords and you know LLCs from outside the area. So I think that one of the things that I, that I learned from that is that when, when properties aren't being inspected by the property owners or the people managing those properties on a regular basis, it creates you know, some environments and some problems in the neighborhoods that, we've all, that we're all aware of. So <clears throat> essentially, in order to address that, um, you know, one department can't, can't respond to this type of problem all by themselves. So a big part of what we've been doing is partnering with uh, individual, well, me personally, I, uh, as an organization or department, we, we communicate better. But I also have made it a, a point to focus in with the individual officers and talk to them and find out what's going on. And there's some things that they can do better than I can do and some things that you know our processes and building inspection work better for. So we've had a good teamwork with the police department. Uh, the Department of Public Works um, have been outstanding in, in helping out with abatements and some of the grass cutting issues. Um, the mayor attends our, our meetings that we that we have on a monthly basis. Um, we've worked uh, quite a bit with Habitat for Humanity in hooking up, hooking up people that um, 
may not have the financial resources and need help uh, in addressing building uh, code violations such as painting or roofing. They're kind of a, a safety net, I guess, for some of the lower income folks that have problems uh, complying. So we try to be patient and we try to hook them up with, with some of those resources. Uh, the city attorney's office has been a great resource and I guess what I'm seeing is everybody working together, at least on the department head level and some of our support organizations <laughs> in the city to really focus on these things, on these problems with sanitation and building code to try to, to really improve the appearance of our neighborhoods. Um, the department heads, you know, extremely supportive. Um, but one of the other things I've kind of learned is that um, this job is a lot like police work in that you have to be a little bit of a social worker in terms of, you know, finding solutions to these things with a certain portion of the people. So we try to be sensitive to that. Um, each one of these properties, you know, one of the standards uh, in our view is that there has to be a beginning to the process of, of getting them uh, repaired and up to code and an ending time. And as long as, as, long as the, those two points are reasonable, we're, we've worked, uh, we've tried to work cooperatively with the residents and be sensitive to some of their needs. Because it crosses just virtually everything from old age to mental illness to lack of financial resources. So there's a lot of reasons for some of the, some of the things you see in the city. So you can't always just assume that it's lack of care or concern. So we try to, we've tried to really uh, pool our resources and work um, as, a, as a team essentially across the city and with some of these support groups to get some of these things addressed. Um, if you go to the next slide, okay. Uh, we got the, uh, Chad asked me to provide a couple of samples, and these samples that you're seeing are not the typical things that, I, that we work on day to day, but they're some of the most problematic and, and, were, and were some of the most difficult to resolve. And these were some cases that actually had to, um, that we had to utilize, uh, you know, city attorney's office, Department of Public Works, um, uh, a lot of different resources to try to get these uh, properties cleaned up. Um, I think that's the... Uh, the, uh, yeah, this particular slide is of a house on North 22nd Street, not 2200 block of North 22nd Street, not an area of the city that you would really expect to have such a serious violation, but this went on for actually way too long. But I think once we figured out how we could work together and respond to this more efficiently, we got it cleaned up. And uh, uh, interestingly, I, you know, one of the side effects of this is that uh, in this house in particular, as I was told, the house immediately next door uh, was in foreclosure at the time we started working on this uh, jointly and I was told by some of the neighbors that uh, the occupants of that house just finally threw up their arms and said you know forget it we're getting out of here um, we can't live next door to these folks and with this problem next door to us and they let their house go back to the bank now it's owner occupied again and uh, hopefully it'll stay that way um, this house ultimately we took I don't know how many how many garbage truck loads and dump truck loads of material out of here Fortunately, we were able to recoup some of that expense uh, through some of the property that was recovered that, was, that still had some value but had to be removed from the lot. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is a house on, on North 16th Street, more in the north, <coughs> northwest, near northwest side. Um, this house is typical. This was a house that the owner walked away from. It, had, it was occupied with tenants in both the upper and the lower, and the owner of the property just walked away from it, left it there. Uh, the tenants continued to live in it for at least a couple of years, two or three years, never paying rent, never doing anything other than trashing the property. And uh, that was another case that literally, it's, we, we spent about probably, I think, three or four hours with public works there, cleaning that out. And these are neighborhood killers. You know, when you have a, a property like this on your block or in your neighborhood, it, it affects everybody. Um, there's all kinds of other things going on associated with crime and, and things like that, but, um, you know, the negative effect that this has on neighborhoods can't be, uh, can't be overstated. That particular house is still, uh, is still held by, we believe, by a bank and a uh, th through a foreclosed mortgage, and we're still having difficulty. You know, it's cleaned up, but we're still having difficulty finding an ultimate resolution for that. One of the other things that's surprised me in, that I, uh, in this position is that a lot of the most serious violations I just drive upon. Neighbors don't, haven't called it in. I just came upon it. This was a house on South 13th Street, 800 block of South 13th Street, that the whole backyard was full of TV, TV sets and the glass and the plastic. I assume somebody was separating it for some type of recycling um, objective, but nobody calls in. And really what that tells me is that that, that concerns me because that shouldn't be the norm in the city neighborhoods. You know, people should be reporting those types of things or sanitation violations. And it seems like in some pockets of the city, it's just, you know, hopefully it, it's, people haven't given up, but um, 
you know, you would expect calls for some of those things. So, um, but we've had good success. You know, the, the, the good side is we've had outstanding success in cleaning these things up and the compliance, once we send out letters and notices with deadlines and things like that, the compliance generally is probably intuitively like in the 90 some percents. So it's not that common that we actually have to get down to the point where we, where we issue citations. Um, this next slide is just a, a property that we're, we continue to work with, um, but sometimes it's just cosmetic things that can make a significant difference. I'm not sure how it shows up on the slide, but a little bit of paint, a little bit of landscaping, reconstructing steps. These are some of the small type projects that you know, we work with the property owners to try to develop. And we've worked with this individual to actually establish, he owns uh, three properties on the same block. And he's actually, um, we've kind of worked with him to develop a rehabilitation plan for his properties. He's got so much to do there that uh, there's no way he's gonna be able to afford to do it all in a short period of time. But we've worked with him throughout the, uh, throughout the summer that he's made progress on two of the three properties and he has a plan for, for moving forward to get them fixed up. And um, the progress between his properties and some of the others on the same block, it's really been transformative on that, in that neighborhood. We've really been pleased with what we've seen there. Um, next slide. Um, sometimes when we do the education piece, I try use you know some of the slides in the house on the on the left with all the trees growing up in front of it and all the trash and junk on the porch. That's an income property. And one of the things that we do in our education piece through the landlord tenant training program and some of our neighborhood talks is tell people how to keep the code enforcement officer away, how to keep them off your back, and letting trees grow up around your foundation and loading up your porch with trash is a sure way to draw attention from the inspection department. So we utilize that type of uh, visual image in some of the training uh, um, materials that we put out. And the other house on the right is just a house where uh, now uh, that's begun to be rehabilitated, but it's just another example of some of the things we see that um, were it not for um, you know, an aggressive program uh, in the inspection department, you know, it might not get addressed as quickly uh, as we are able to now. Um, So I think I've covered most of the things that I had in my notes here. Uh, if anyone has any questions, I'd be glad to answer uh, questions before Chad takes over again. Chad? So what I wanted to do is just as a summary recap, show you where we are from the division standpoint on revenues. Um, and this is really from January 1st through December 4th. Uh, we, in October, in the middle of all this, trans changed over to a new program, so we're now on the MUNIS program, so we've, we're, operating, we were, we're operating in two systems yet, so we still continue to work through that. But um, what you can see here is the two columns on the left, 2014-2015. This is uh, what we, the, the grayish green color is what we budgeted, and the blue color is our actuals. Um, again, this is through the 12-4 timeline, so the rest of our staff has been um, really focusing their time on development and probably on the south side, two key projects is the Becknell um, Old Wisconsin Sausage Factory building and the Acuity expansion, and we've got staff at Acuity probably every day, all, all morning for sure. So that's been keeping us busy, and that's the primary area, but we've had a lot of other um, you know, increases in revenues over the last few years uh, just on the whole home maintenance side of things and those types of things. And then you can just see that uh, the last two columns are what we budget each year for department expenses. So um, it's been good years. Um, we've seen that for the you know, last couple of years. I think next year is going to be another good year and then potentially 2017 and who knows what's going to happen from that time on. But um, we've been very busy. Um, we have one and a half staff people in the front office, and um, they've been successful in keeping up with the paperwork and, and all that stuff and going to a new software program and changing our whole permitting process. So um, it's been a good year. If there's any other questions, I'd be happy to address them. Otherwise, thank you. See you not. Chad, thank you very much for your report. Great job. Next item on the agenda is public forum. Uh, none this evening. All right. We'll move on then to mayor's announcements. Uh, today is Pearl Harbor Day when we remember the attack on Pearl Harbor by Japan and uh, 
the 2,403 uh, service people that died in that attack. Uh, today there was a Pearl Harbor ceremony uh, hosted by the Retired Enlisted Association down at the lakefront. And they've done this for several decades now. And for the last uh, number of years, they've been using the King Park Pavilion. And today they presented a proclamation to me, which I'd just like to read. Whereas the date of December 7th of 1941 is buried in infamy and marks the beginning of a war which claimed 4, 400,000 lives. And whereas it's the responsibility of current inhabitants to honor the memory of the fallen. And whereas in Sheboygan we have the freedom to gather and commemorate this day, and whereas the Enlisted Association Chapter 76 has sponsored this event each year, now therefore be it resolved to honor the City of Sheboygan and Mayor Mike Vandersteen for their work to support this event. Signed by Ronald Hummich, Chapter President. And uh, moving on, winter is upon us and winter parking rules are now in effect. I uh, just want to remind everyone when the snow comes, park for tomorrow. It's also bringing a flurry of Christmas displays. And um, we have a new Christmas display at the Fountain Park, at the Fountain at Mead Library Plaza. I hope everyone gets a chance to see that. And our uh, Shoreline uh, Metro is running a jingle bus, which will be departing the uh, drop-off uh, central uh, at right, right across from City Hall on all the Thursdays from next week until Christmas and also two Thursdays on the 10th and the 17th. Um, just one non-parable sh uh, food item per person is the fare for the bus that day and it'll be uh, first come first served and buses will be departing at both 6 and 7 o'clock on those evenings. <coughs> Okay, we'll return to the agenda then. Um, we have a hearing to conduct next. Item 2.1 is a hearing to create a commuter impacted parking area on the north, or excuse me, on the east side of North 12th Street between North Avenue and School Avenue. Is there anyone wishing to be heard for that hearing? Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to close the hearing. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> motion passes. Next, move on to the consent agenda. That will include items 3.2 through 3.14. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and file all reports of officers, accept and adopt all reports of committees, and put all, resolution and all resolutions and ordinances upon their passage. Second. Thank you for that motion. Is there any discussion on the consent agenda items? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? <clears throat> 13 ayes. Motion passes. Next move on to reports of officers. Items 4.1 through 4.4 will be referred to um, various committees. Under resolutions, item 5.1 is a resolution by Alderman Hammond accepting $75,000 in grant monies from the State Energy Office to install new LED street lighting on Kohler Memorial Drive from Taylor Drive east to North 14th Street. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd uh, first move to suspend the rules. Second. Is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, please proceed. Thank you. I move to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that uh, motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.2 is a resolution by Alderman Hammond accepting an additional $40,200 in grant monies from the Wisconsin Department of Administration Community Block Grant Disaster Recovery Program to be used in the purchasing of street lights for Pennsylvania Avenue Project. Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you again, Mr. Mayor. Again, I move to suspend the rules. Second. Is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, please proceed. I uh, move to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. 
Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. Items 5.3 through 5.9 will be referred to various committees. <clears throat> Under reports of committees, item 6.1 is an RC by law and licensing to whom was referred pursuant to RO number 182 of 1516 by the city clerk various license application and recommends that beverage operators license application number 9294 be denied based upon her record of violations related to the license activity and her record as a repeat law offender. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for the motion and support under discussion. Is Monica Torres here this evening? She is not. Um, the committee voted five to zero to deny her license. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.2 is an RC by law and licensing to whom is referred RO number 182 of 1516 by the city clerk submitting variance licensed application and recommends that beverage operators license application 0935 be denied based upon her failure to accurately review all relevant convictions on her application and her record of violations related to the licensed activity. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support under discussion. Is Lola Yang here this evening? She is not. Um, again, the committee voted not five to zero to deny her license. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.3 is an RC by law and licensing voting to conditionally recommend that the Common Council not renew the taxi cab driver license number 9846 held by Celia M. Warich. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you. Move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for the motion and support. Under discussion. Is Celia Warwick here this evening? Um, the committee voted four to one to deny the license. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.4 is an RC by finance and whoever referred resolution number 105 of 1516 by Alderman Hammond approving the terms and conditions of the contract for sale of land between the city of Sheboygan and A Street Housing Corporation and recommends that the resolution be passed. <laughs> Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and adopt and put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for your motion and support. Under discussion. Seeing no discussion, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 7.1 will be referred to the City Planning Commission. Under matters laid over, Item 8.1 is resolution number 103 of 1516 by Alderman Hammond, Koth, Carlson, and Donahue and Wolf, authorizing the purchasing agent to enter into a contract for assessment services for the city of Sheboygan. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion. Seeing no discussion, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? <clears throat> 
13 ayes. Motion passes. Item 8.2 is, is RC number 20, uh, 216 of 1516 by Public Protection and Safety, whom was referred General Ordinance 34 of 1516 by Alderman Carlson, creating commuter impacted parking on the east side of North 12th Street between North Avenue and School Avenue and recommends that the ordinance be passed. Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and adopt the RC and put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? <clears throat> 12 ayes, 1 no. Motion passes. 8.3 is General Ordinance Number 37 of 1516 by Alderman Donahue, Heideman, Hammond, Boren, and Koth, amending the municipal code is to modify the current part-time activity coordinator slash volunteer manager and create a job description for Senior Activities Assistant Supervisor in the Senior Activities Center. Alderman Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to uh, put the ordinance upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage. Thirteen ayes. Motion passes. 8.4 is General Ordinance Number 38 of 1516 by Alderman Donahue, Hammond, Bourne, Heideman, and Koth, amending the municipal code is to delete and add a position in the Department of Public Works Table of Organization. Alderman Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to put the uh, ordinance upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Thirteen ayes. Motion passes. Item 8.5 is general ordinance number 39 of 1516 by Alderman Donahue, Hammond, Bourne, Heideman, and Koth amending the municipal code is to add and delete various positions to police department's table of organization. Alderman Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to uh, uh, put the ordinance upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll? 13 ayes. Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to other matters. City Attorney. Thank you. 9.1 is an RO submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2016 and June 30, 2017. That will be referred to the Law and Licensing Committee. 9.2 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting a communication from Ted Mackham, Wisconsin Market President for Gorman and Company Incorporated, requesting the conditional use permit be extended for 1238 Geely Avenue, Washington School. So that will be referred to the City Planning Commission. 9.3 is a resolution to authorize a transfer of appropriations in the 2015 budget to establish es estimated revenue and appropriation for a donation received from the Laverne E. Carter Estate to Mead Library to be transferred to the Everhard for Trust Funds. That'll be referred to the Finance Committee. Next, we have a motion to meet in closed session. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to convene in closed session under the exemption provided in Section 19851E of the Wisconsin Statutes for the purpose of delivering the possible sale of public property where competitive and bargaining reasons require a closed session related to the former Shukert property. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Will the clerk please call the roll? 13 ayes. For the uh, motion passes. For the public who's watching tonight on TV, the broadcast of the, the council meeting, uh, we will not be coming back into open session to adjourn. We'll be adjourning in closed session. So this will conclude our broadcast and we'll take a five minute recess and reconvene.